welcome back to the Knowledge Academy's YouTube channel. Today we're going to dive into two powerful features in my SQL, the having clause and aliases. By the end of this video, you'll understand how to filter group data with having and make your queries more readable with aliases. Let's jump right in. Let's start with the having clause. The having clause is used in SQL to filter records grouped by the group by clause. This is different from the WHERE clause, which filters records before any groupings are made. While WHERE clause is used to filter individual rows, on the other hand, HAVING clause is used to filter groups of rows that meet a certain condition. Let's understand the syntax for the HAVING statement. First, everything will go same as any other query. First, we will write it as Select name of one column, next specify the aggregate function column. Then from, specify table name here. Now where, here we specify the condition. Next, write group by and specify the column name. Then the having clause is written along with condition, which needs to be applied on aggregate function column. Let's take the Netflix titles table data again, which we used in previous video. Linked to the Netflix titles data set is mentioned in the description below. We will continue with the same data set to understand the new concepts in this video. Suppose we want to find out how many shows were added each year and only include years where more than five shows were added. First, we'll write a basic query to group by the release year and count the number of shows. First, let's just type out the initial group by query in my SQL. We will select the release year and count the show ID as count shows. From the Netflix titles table, group it by release year. Group by clause here groups the year together, which would help us to get count of shows year by year. In case you want to know more about the group by clause, then watch our previous video to get more detailed knowledge of it. Let's execute this query. As you can see, we have the count of shows for each release year. This query groups the shows by their release year and counts the number of shows for each year. But let's apply a filter using the having clause to only include years where more than five shows were added now in the same code, we will just add having clause after group by. We will write it as having count of show ID, which are greater than five. The having clause filters the group data based on the condition we specify. In this case, we're only interested in years where more than five shows were added. Let's run this query and see the result. There you go. We now have a filtered list showing only the years with more than five shows added. The having clause is perfect to filtering group data which the WHERE clause can't do since it works on individual rows before grouping. Now a question for you. What is the primary purpose of the HAVING clause in SQL? A. To filter individual rows before any groupings are made. B. To filter records group by, the group by clause. C. To join multiple tables together. D. To create temporary names for columns or table. Write down your answer below in the comment section. Moving on. Now let's understand aliases in SQL. Aliases allow us to give temporary names to our columns or tables, making our queries more readable and easier to manage, especially in complex queries. Aliases are incredibly useful when you want to simplify your SQL queries. For instance, if you have column names that are long or not very descriptive, you can use an alias to give them a more meaningful name. This not only makes your code easier to read, but helps others understand your query. Let's start with a simple example. Suppose in the previous example which we took of counting movies and TV shows each year, in the same code we will rename few columns so as to understand the concept. Now if we want to rename the release year column to year release and the show count column to number of shows in our output. For this the whole code will be same as before, just in the select section we will write released year as year released and this area where we wrote count show ID as number of rows, here also the A's, which we used is an alias. Let's execute this. You can see in the previous output, the names of the columns were different, and now we have changed it according to our need. By using the as keyword, we create aliases for the release year and show count columns, making them more readable in our output. See how the column names are now more user-friendly? Aliases are particularly useful when you're working with complex queries involving multiple joins and aggregate functions. We will be using aliases more and more in the upcoming videos, here we are only getting a gist of it. Aliases are also useful for table names, especially when dealing with multiple joins. Instead of writing out long table names, you can use short, meaningful aliases. We will be learning more about joins and aliases in upcoming videos. One more practice question for you. 
What is the purpose of using an alias in SQL? A. To permanently rename a column or table in the database. B. To create a temporary name for a column or table within a SQL query. C. To encrypt the column or table names for security purposes. D. To create a backup of the table with a different name. Write down your answer below in the comment section. And that's it for today's tutorial. We've covered how to use the having clause to filter group data and how to use aliases to make your queries more readable and systematic. These tools will help you write cleaner, more efficient SQL queries. In the next video of this SQL tutorial series, we will be learning about more ways of filtering in SQL and operators in SQL. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more exciting and informative content. Don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss an update.